Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwa Fili Rose Amador, and together we are Native Voice TV. We are the Indigenous people. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce Eddie Madrill. Welcome, Eddie. And he is a man of many, many talents. So he says. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> Got the wrong email. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about yourself, Eddie. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. How much time do we have? Um, well, my Not name's the Eddie. short version. <laughs> okay, the synopsis. <laughs> my name is Eddie Madrill, and I come from the Pascua Yaqui people, which come from southern Arizona, northern Mexico. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, some of the dancing that I do, mainly for schools, uh, for the education of children uh, throughout the Bay Area, primarily. Um, what uh, ages do you work with? Uh, Pre-K through fifth. Pre-K is hard, though, so I really try not to announce that one very much. But kindergarten through fifth grade, um, all throughout the Bay Area in Northern California, um, going in and doing assemblies mm -hmm. uh, with a dance group called Four Winds um, for the past, ooh, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. Um, but in this past year or two, because of schedules, um, I've been doing solos. So is that like one wind or? Yeah, it's just one wind. It's just one direction. <laughs> so I only dance one way. I can't go back. Once ah. I go off stage, it's, I'm done. That's it. Um, but we do performances and uh, we educate the children about Native American people and Native American cultures and try and dispel a lot of the things that, uh, you know, that oh, are yeah. preconceived notions that a lot of times that people come up with. And, some of the crazy questions that come up as well through the assembly. So we rarely do question and answer series. We try and answer all those questions through the, the assembly. What are the most common preconceived notions that a lot of students have from all the different schools? Um, and again, you know, when you say all the different schools, you know, we have a lot of different demographics. You know, we yeah. have some, you know, some shady areas, you know, God bless the children. Um, uh, but, you know, those, and then we have some very affluent children, you know, that come mm -hmm. from certain neighborhoods. But uh, primarily they, they get their notions from education from either their parents or TV and teachers, unfortunately. Or the textbooks. Or the textbooks. Which um, are wrong too. But a lot of questions are, um, do Indian people really exist? And I have to like have them, you know, fill in my hand and go, I'm, I'm real, this is me, no, no, holog no hologram. Um, do Indian people really exist? Uh, are there really only, is there really real Indians anymore? I mean, even from the adults, some of these questions uh, come from. Uh, you know, uh, do they all speak the same language? Do they all live in teepees? Um, you know, before I had long hair, I was, you know, how can you be Indian when you don't have long hair? Do you ride a horse? Um, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Right, way off, huh? So we try and do all, so after years and years of doing this, we try and answer all those questions through the presentation. Um, that's fun and vibrant, you know, exciting when we have a Red Bull. Um, <clears throat> but uh, throughout that, you know, we are serious about, you know, trying to educate the children as well as the teachers because sometimes teachers, unfortunately, again, mm -hmm. will come to an assembly expecting that be their break time to correct papers or something. So we get them involved as well. Um, and uh, we let them know that, you know, we're representing a very small group of Native people that primarily come from the plains, you know, the northern plains, southern plains in the dancing that we do, which is uh, socially appropriate for us to do, you know, like powwow style dancing, yeah. but we let them know that my tribe doesn't do this dancing, our tribe does this, you know, mm -hmm. these tribes do this. There's over 550 tribes, there's 50 language families, well, more than that, um, you know, uh, several hundred dialects, um, all kinds of different homes that, you know, uh, are dependent upon the, the environment. So we try and teach the children, you know, about the environment. Um, what's important to the people are the things that provide them with food, clothing, and shelter. So some dancers are for this, some dancers are for that. Um, and letting the children know that we're all different and yeah. we'd really try and make uh, a relationship between what they're familiar with in their own communities or through history, European slash Western history that they're familiar with and they can kind of make an association with that. And Native American-ism, Native American history, they're not, it's not so easily conceivable. Yeah. How about them. the whole indigenous thing? Do you get into the South America, Central America, Indians, or anything like that when you're educating a lot of the students there? Not really with the small kids, but when mm -hmm. I go and do every once in a while a lecture, guest lecture, guest spot for uh, universities, yeah, well, I'll get into that. Um, I taught a class at San Francisco State on American Indian music, <coughs> and a lot of people at that time <coughs> thought I was going to be doing, you know, powwow drumming, and that's all we we're going to do. Yeah. And it was going to be Northern Plains drumming, and that's all, you know, because what really is there any real Indian music anyway besides that? Cause that's what everybody's familiar with. Yeah. Um, but again, as people have taught me and making relationships with our whole, you know, our whole universe, our whole world around us this way and this way, um, we're human beings first and foremost. And then we yeah. get into being, you know, our indigenous selves. I'm Yaki. I'm not Native American unless I satisfy somebody's category. I yeah. don't want to get all political <laughs> about it. Anyway. That's fine. That's what um, I believe. <laughs> but when I was teaching at a university level, when I go in there, you know, I was explaining to them, 
you know, we're not so exclusive. I'm very, very proud. We are proud people. However, understanding like, academically, we're not so exclusive that we're the only ones who had a drum. So let's go ahead and go from there. Yeah. And if you guys can understand that I'm coming from that perspective, we're going we're to have a, a dialogue rather than a monologue. So mm -hmm. it's easy for me to, to exchange with the students when they say, well, I'm from the Philippines and we have such and such. Yeah. I'm from, you know, uh, you know, I'm a Laplander from northern Russia and we have the same problems you are, you know, you've had in the past. We're having that problem now. The yeah. Russian government doesn't want us there. So you sit there and go, wow, there's so much to be learned yeah. as human beings mm -hmm. first. And it just makes it a lot easier um, to go ahead and engage with the people through, you know, even with, by definition, the ignorance. Yeah. You know? And I, I mean that truly by definition, that these people aren't rude or disrespectful, they just don't know. And that's, yeah. you know, <coughs> ignorance comes from the idea that somebody just doesn't know. And if we can have that open, eye, you know, open mind, open heart, then we're going to have a dialogue and we're going to walk side by side. We have a that's few cool. pictures. You can explain them to us. All right. And once again, your group is four, four wins. Um, we've been around since 1983. The gentleman on the far left is Tony Fuentes from the Sisseton Lakota tribe. Um, he came into my brother and I's life in 1983 and he shared with us, you know, the hoop dance and a lot of other dances. And we went on, you know, going and doing a lot of performances. And uh, back when I was a pipsqueak with, with no roach and one fancy dance bustle, I was, he still <laughs> took me in and, and had me going around and uh, performing. <laughs> The gentleman in the middle is my younger little brother, even though he's bigger than me. I think he just had better... He's a real quiet one. Yeah, he, he got a, I think he had a better diet growing up, and <laughs> I, I was given seconds or something. But he's a northern traditional dancer, and uh, the two of us are, you know, as I said, yaki. So we go back to our reservation down in um, Bosco, outside of Tucson, for our ceremonies as well. So we're familiar with that. It's not, you know, the uh, powwow dancing making us Indian. Yeah. Uh, this is actually at a, at a elementary school. It's actually a pre-K school, like a Montessori school. And it's really, really hard dancing for these kids because there's so much chitter-chatter. But they <laughs> ask the craziest questions. And, you know, these are the one group that you wouldn't want to ask questions from. But we, we <laughs> ask them anyway because we have kids raising their hand and saying, you know, oh, I have a cat. And that's their question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good for you. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, this is me working with the, uh, the audience, uh, teaching some, some sign language. Um, there's been a couple of times where I've had the opportunity to um, write a little bit of a phrase or, or a few phrases for sign language um, for other productions and other performances. So I was able to take that and bring it in with the children so that they can see a little bit of sign language and, uh, see, and get something a little bit more philosophical out of it. Yeah. Um, so for instance, this, this phrase right here would be, um, you know, education is not the enemy, a weak or broken heart is the enemy. Uh, stay strong in your love to the Creator, and you will be, you know, strong forever. That's right. The, the native, indigenous people are the original sign language. Yeah. yeah. So it's not ASL. It's not American Sign Language. It's American yeah. Indian Sign Language, which yeah. I had the fortune of being able to learn from different people. Cool. So your performances, how long are they? Do you do um, them on stage? <clears throat> what, you know, what yeah, we do them on stage unless it's a really small school, and uh, we'll have to do them somewhere where they accommodate their kids. You want to fall off the stage. Yeah. And Well, I've had a, an incident <laughs> falling off the stage before. We get a little hyper and get a little uh, fun. Um, <laughs> but our performances are usually about an hour. Um, as a soloist, they've been about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, especially because of the transition for the next uh, grades. So we'll do like a kindergarten through second, and then third, fourth, and fifth, the next one. So the language and the antics, I shouldn't say antics, but the language and the, uh, the energy level is a little bit different for, for each grade level. Um, some Did kids, you do high school? No. Why? All right. <laughs> so, I can imagine, but I'm I, I, wouldn't <laughs> mind, I, I don't mind doing high schools if we can go in or if I can go in and do like a precursor, if I can go in there like maybe once a week for four weeks and explain to them <laughs> for this, four is, weeks? this is what it's going to take for you guys to understand what we're doing. Otherwise, we're a dog and pony show to a lot of high school kids. God bless them again. Their ignorance is that they're, they're seeing an assembly. Assembly to them is a break time just as much as it is for the teacher sometimes. Yeah. Um, so they see us walking out with feathers. They see yeah. us walking out with no pants. We're, working, you know, we're wearing shorts with a breech cloth. To them, it's a show. Mm -hmm. um, they're not given a good uh, education about it beforehand. So exactly. there's not like a study guide or something mm -hmm. like that for them to go and go, I'm going to go witness something that I'm just a little bit familiar with and I understand that there should be a little bit of respect. I mean, you don't have to accept what we're doing as being something that yeah. you need to take as, as, as guidelines for your own life. However, if you can at least respect it as something that is important to a people and how mm -hmm. it changes people and how we are still today Native people with a little bit of pride, at least. So do you ever get the, the, the question, it's like, you guys are four wins, but how come there's only three of you? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's just like that. 
<laughs> she's um, like that. You know, the four <laughs> winds really represent just like, you know, we learn from a lot of different symbols um, through, you know, not just Native America, but, you know, people from around the world. Symbols, you know, represent a lot of different things. And the four winds means the four directions, north, mm -hmm. west, south, east. And uh, we're dancing for all these people. You know, we're dancing because that east doesn't go in a straight line off the earth. It goes all the way around, you know, full circle. And the circle mm -hmm. is really, really important to a lot of people, not just indigenous Americas. Mm -hmm. But um, the four winds really is who we're dancing for. And it's not each of us takes a title of one of the winds. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be blessed. I'm, I'm dying of curiosity. Yes. What is that and what's it for? And um, these Do are, something with it. <laughs> these, these are corn husks. Uh -huh. and I, I think of them as, you know, you put them onto um, tamales. tamales and well, then they're left over. Well, when I do a residency, which is where I go into a school for sometimes eight weeks, mm -hmm. uh, once a week, you know, we do a lot of uh, American Indian stuff so they can kind of get an idea of what's happening. These are dry, but you should soak them in warm water. And uh, what you would do is you would take a cotton ball and stick it right there to create like a little head. And I would have these third graders, it's usually third, grader, third graders at residencies, you'd have them tie a knot. However, their little hands don't always tie knots very well. And it makes kind of like a little small head right there. Have them put that to the side. You fold this one and you roll it up. <clears throat> I'm going to move this cup if you oh, don't sure, mind. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So I can see that little doll. You want head. extra water, I know. That's right. And you roll this up right here. Uh, I see that before. And you're making kind of like a little straw or a tube. The arm? And you put that right in between the little folded uh, corn husk taco, I guess you can call it, right there, and you hold it, hold it upside down. Again, these are wet when you uh, do it. It's more pliable, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, you should have said that. Oh yeah, I did, <laughs> I, I did a little while ago. You were looking at this wet. <laughs> no, I need that for later after all this talking. So you put, these right, put one of these right underneath the thumb, just like oh, so. Oh, how cute. It's kind and of this cute. one on that side, so it's uh -huh. kind of like a little upside down uh, corn husk doll sandwich and you tie this one like so just above the arms and you have yourself a nice little tied knot you peel these down like a banana and you have yourself a little person um, okay. now a lot of the kids when they get these you know they're in third grade and you know they have issues about having a doll especially the boys so I explain to them what the corn husk doll is first um, you know, a lot of different tribes had things like corn husk dolls. They had dolls that are made out of wood, dolls that are made out of clay, and the dolls represent different things to different tribes. And they tell stories. They tell stories about heroes, monsters, love, war. They tell all these things, and they're the way that, you know, some tribes keep the history for the children. Since we, don't, we weren't raised with books, and you put them away, and if you don't remember what, what's happening, you know, you recite that book again. This is a way for us to know those stories, just like the songs carry the stories. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of dolls don't have a face on them because well, if it's, a, if it's a really happy face on there and you want it to go to sleep, it's going to look like this. <laughs> if your doll is supposed to be upset or, you know, falling off a cliff or something like that, and it's like this, it's not very believable. So a lot of dolls you'll find in books or in museums, they don't have a face uh -huh. yeah. to show that, uh, you know, your imagination is what creates the doll. Um, and for the boys at the very end, if they want to split it up the middle like this and tie some string here and tie some string here, this is a, one of the most simple cornhouse dolls you can make. There's a lot of different corn husk dolls that you'll see in a lot of different places um, that are really, really, you know, uh, elaborate. Um, a lot of hair, um, robes, shawls, um, you know, sometimes hands and fingers and yeah. things like that. Uh, this is a simple one, you know, for little kids He's to walking. do. And it, it's a good way for them to, to learn. And I explained to the kids, when I was growing up, I have two brothers, but my parents always had dolls in the house. Even as we were teenagers, there was always dolls in the house. And the things that we grew up with as, as boys in, in our household was, if there's a doll or a stuffed animal between the couch cushions on a bookshelf upside down or facing away, we would get in trouble because what we were taught is the way that we treat this is the way we're going to treat our friends, our pets, our animals, our family. So we need to treat everything with respect if we believe the idea that all things are, are living, living oh, beings. That's a good so the message. way that we treat that is the way that we are going to treat ourselves, our family and, and oh. such. So it's a learning experience even in today's time. It has nothing to do with history. You're going to have to give me another lesson because uh <laughs> I think I got lost after you tied the head on. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'll keep this stall. Sure, no problem. <laughs> stand her up. Oops, she can't stand it. I think it's sleepy time for that one. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> she wants to jump off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, look at that. So, another tradition. That I've been uh, kind of like bumping these these hoops here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, can you explain 
what the hoop is? And well, I brought with myself a few hoops. Um, the hoops, again, I, as I said, you know, Tony Fuentes, a Sistina Dakota person, uh, man, brought this hoop into my life. And as I explained to the children, you know, the circle is a circle of life, as we've all been taught, even a lot of people who aren't indigenous, they learn from movies. And it really means that there's no beginning, there's no end. The sun rises, sets, and then rises again for us to do something great each day. Um, you know, I, I asked the kids as well, you know, what kind of different things can they imagine with a hoop? And I tell them when I feel as though it's okay, I let them know that this really, to me, is like, is like my church. Mm -hmm. For them, it's a tube, it's a pl piece of plastic with tape around it, that's okay. Mm -hmm. No problem. You know, it can be that. That's exactly what it is. It can be round and sideways, it can be straight. But to me, this is really like my church in the essence that it teaches me how to become a better human being. It tells me stories. And the hoop dance is a dance that a lot of different tribes um, will have their origin stories about. Mm -hmm. And it's been given to me in a lot of different ways. But uh, one of the things I like is the story about the children down in the Southwest who were given the hoops to build dexterity because some of those children had to go up into their homes um, that were cliff dwellings. And mm -hmm. if they were being attacked by enemy or by animal, they couldn't get surrounded, but they'd have to climb in their homes. And there weren't always ladders there. So they would have to use dexterity, hand-eye coordination to, to uh, climb up to safety. So the hoop was given to them. There's a lot of different stories. Again, as I say, some tribes um, will have dancers in their tribes today that will dance with up to 30 hoops, 40 hoops, and tell very beautiful stories with a lot of different wow. things. I was taught that um, you know, the, the, the most you can create with the least amount as possible is, is a really good tradition, as well as some tribes use the dance primarily for uh, healing purposes, you know, healing ceremonies. So I brought these hoops today so I can kind of share with you a little bit about the hoop can, dance. Can we see a demonstration? Uh, will you guys uh, participate with me later? <laughs> he will. We're tethered right. down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we didn't bring any music today, so I'm going to lay them down. There's some dancers that will dance with the hoops, um, holding them all in their hands. I was told that since we're not the ones who created any of the living beings or any of the things here on Earth, that we need to pick up the hoops, uh, hoops off the ground with our feet, then our hands. Mm -hmm. So we tell a story of creation by entering the circle. Wow. And then just like for some who have Western education, we understand that there's mitosis. And entering into the earth by two human beings. Four seasons, four directions, Krebs cycle, if you're going to go into science again. <laughs> and that's why there's a great deal of pride in being native and having all of those things that Western science has taught us and being uh, very knowledgeable about all those things without those graphs and diagrams, but rather having it in our songs, our stories, and our dances. So again, for the children, you know, I asked them that they not say anything and that one of the most important things I ever learned in my life is that we have two eyes, two ears, and only one mouth. So it's more important throughout our life to watch and listen than it is to talk. And after having said that about once or twice, I asked the children to do a favor for me, and that is not to say anything during this dance, but to watch and listen and see all the different things that they can imagine in the dance. And that when they go back to class, <laughs> they can either write about it or talk about it, draw a picture about it, depending on the grade, depending on the teacher. Of course, with music, I uh, do a lot more spinning. You can see. A little more dancing. Wow, look at that. And of course, we end with what's important to all of us. Oh, wow. wow. So that's a hoop dance. That is <laughs> beautiful. Thank you.
My son, this is going to try. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> when, when you guys are ready, have some extra hoops down there. You just yeah. let me know. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. We'll be all stuck. Hey, we'll do one, can we do one little quick thing? You have to call the. We'll, we'll do one. We'll, we'll do one little quick thing. Come on, we'll do one real quick thing. It'll be real simple. I'm tethered here. Just, we'll take it off. Okay. Just take it off. Real quick. Okay. I don't know where it's at. But here it is. I got it. Okay. All right, you'll stand on this side. Okay. And the uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, put one foot in. Okay. And with this one, we're going to roll it up, and we're going to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Catch it with this foot, so you have to kind of kick it. Oh. Yep, there you go. And go ahead and grab it. Okay. And put it over your body. All right. All right. I'm going to put it in between our knees. Okay. And we're just going to put one foot in and the other foot in. Okay. And we're just going to walk. Jeez. Don't fall. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then when kids tell me that that's simple or that's easy, I always let them know that life, you know, isn't always so easy that we have to, you know, things get harder and harder as we go. <laughs> So you either go backwards <laughs> <laughs> or have them run. So there's so many different things that we can Come do with run, it. Wow. Send us no. so, <laughs> so that's just one of the simpler wow. things that we can, wow. we can do with the hoops. That's amazing. So we get to do that with the kids, and it's a lot of fun. And, of course, when they, again, if they say that it's too easy, then I give them a smaller hoop, which I always bring with me. So letting them know that you know, throughout life there's always things to be learned and stuff for us to, to be accountable for. How long did it take you to learn? How long have you been doing that? Um, 24 years. Really? And I'm 27. Um, 24 years. Um, <laughs> Let's see your license. <laughs> <laughs> 24 years um, back in 83. And uh, uh, I was taught with five hoops. And being 13, and you can imagine being 13, you're not really the most disciplined little boy. So I it took uh, four hours um, just about every day for a full summer. Wow. Yeah, this takes a lot of discipline. So, so Sundas, you, you, you could start now, and you'll oh, be yeah, ready to perform now. by the fall. By the fall, yeah. I'll be doing all the eagle. Thank you so much for doing that <laughs> with me. Oh, thank you. Sure. Really important. Great. Wow. So you're going to teach him how to do the hoops. I'm going to learn how to make <laughs> these dolls, and uh, we're all set. Well, there you go. Then you get to take my job, and we'll franchise. All yeah. right. <laughs> should be right. selling these over at the flea market. <laughs> Pretty soon. <laughs> uh, they have some really nice uh, cornhouse makers out there, cornhouse doll makers I've out there, and so, especially ones. some of the ones out of Mexico. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. Really, really nice. So what's your uh, next projects? Where, or where are you performing? Um, um, well, I've actually had the fortune of going on, uh, on stage with a, a production called People Like Me, which is put together by World Arts West. They're the ones who put together the Ethnic Dance Festival every June. Um, the People Like Me production is where we go out um, to theaters and a lot of mm -hmm. kids get bussed in and uh, get to see a lot of different dancers uh, doing their craft, doing their traditions. Uh, myself and uh, African, sometimes Japanese, a lot of different you know, ethnic cultures from mm -hmm. around the world that will come in and share that. Let's see, coming up soon, just a lot of schools. So they're always, you know, That's private good. functions. I mean, That's they're always good. a school. Yeah. So I stay pretty busy, and I'm very, very fortunate to be to have been given these gifts to, you know, share. There was a time where, you know, the things that I get to do, you know, rather easily now wasn't so easy for some of our people in the past. So I don't take it lightly that I have the fortune of being able to do this in a lot of different places. So some teachers out there in the audience see you, and they want to book you. How can they get a hold of you? Well, they can email me first. Okay. So at ringman123 okay. at yahoo.com. Um, and then we can just take it from there because I, I do have a regular job too, and uh, <laughs> and I'm actually a teacher for kids with kids teaching math to first graders. Oh, you are? Yeah, oh, in San okay. Mateo. Um, but I I go all throughout the Bay Area. So if they're to email me and to have a little a bit of an interest, then I'll be more than happy to extend some information to them. Oh, great! About that. That's wonderful. Well, we'll probably put you a little clip of you doing the the uh, hoop dance. Hoop dance on. YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Uh -oh. so we've, been, we've been putting a lot of, of our uh, <laughs> guests on there. Well, make sure you speed it up so people don't take everything that I do. Oh, we, we <laughs> check everything, especially the you step know. by step yeah, with black the, footprints on the, the floor. Just the middle. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a one, whole two, little three, thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. You know when it's time to turn the page when you're here. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on. Well, thank we want to have much. you again so you can do a little skit hmm. and um, with maybe the other two wins or. Well, By that's, that's a way. dance group. The theater company the is theater really with my brother and I. Yeah. And oh, we've okay. had that since 1999. Yeah, in fact, that's where I, I saw you guys at San Jose uh, State. You and your brother are doing a performance. Which was, I wonder which one it was. Uh, we've done, San Francisco State's been really, really good to us in, yeah. in uh, taking a chance at having us there at their school and performing for them with the, uh, with the theater. So we've been yeah. able to produce a few things, especially yeah. for them, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I remember you guys. Uh, I remember 
you were the talker, and your, I remember your brother, so. Well, he's so the, he's the brawn, fella. I'm the brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he hear that? I hope You're not going to let him that. see this. <laughs> no, 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 he no. will. <laughs> we'll see him next time with the black eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't see it. There'll be a piece of meat over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming thank on, and I, I look Appreciate forward it. to having you back again and performing for us. And thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next Sunday, 6 p.m. on Native Voice TV. Check out YouTube. Good night. YouTube. Look for Native Voice TV. Yeah. One word. <laughs>